Hey up everyone, so before we jump into this review, I just want to apologize for the lighting in this video. Normally I have my blinds down with the studio lighting, but for some reason the blinds aren't responding to the remote control. So yeah, they're halfway up right now, which is why there's all this extra light in here. So yeah, apologies if this video looks a little weird. Glenn's the one who knows how to fix the blinds, but he's not here right now, so I'm just gonna have to work with what I've got. So yeah, today's movie that I'm discussing on the channel is the new Bob Marley biopic titled Bob Marley, One Love, which is directed by Reynaldo Marcus Green. He's a chap who directed The Crowd Pleaser, King Richard, which won Will Smith his first Oscar. Cut to the slap. I was actually a pretty big fan of King Richard. As you can see, I've added it to my collection. It's by no means a masterpiece, but it is a well-made, well-acted, very enjoyable biopic. And um, yeah, it's very rewatchable as well. Um, so I was hoping that um, Green would deliver another enjoyable biopic with one love. When it comes to Bob Marley, I wouldn't say that I'm a diehard fan of his music, but I do enjoy a fair amount of his songs, like One Love, Is This Love, Three Little Birds, No Woman, No Cry, and I Shot the Sheriff. She didn't do it, she didn't do it. Yeah, there's no denying the man has made some absolute bangers which have stood the test of time. But yeah, I'm pretty familiar with his music, but I don't really know much about the man himself, so I was hoping this biopic might provide more information on that. But after I watched this film, I didn't really feel like I learned much new about him, other than the fact that he died of cancer at the age of 36. There's four writers credited on IMDb for this, but it doesn't really feel like they came to a consensus on what they wanted this movie to be. It's not one of those biopics which goes through the whole life of Bob Marley and does the Greatest Hits tour. No, this movie is primarily set over one or two years, 1976 through to like 1978. And it follows Bob and the rest of his band, The Wailers, as they create the Exodus album, as well as the successful tour around Europe. It's kind of teased throughout that the film is building to this peace concert that Bob Marley hosted in Jamaica in 1978. Uh, so you think the film is building to this exciting, you know, climactic concert crescendo and Bob gets on the stage and the film ends. It's just, it kind of feels a bit like a cop out. I felt a little bit cheated by that because they were teasing it, but they don't actually deliver on that promise. How do I describe this movie? It was just so blah. <laughs> Besides two solid performances from Kingsley Benadir and Lashana Lynch, who played Bob Marley and his wife Rita, as well as some cool costumes and wig work, this movie is about as close to a cookie cutter biopic as you can expect. It is so conventional. The writers and director Reynaldo Marcus Green take absolutely no risks with telling Bob Marley's story. They were clearly afraid of like tainting Bob Marley's legacy because the film paints him out to be this angelic, like almost perfect human being who's this loving husband to Rita, played by Lashana Lynch, but you know, it's well documented that Bob Marley had multiple children with other women you know, outside of their marriage, and yet the film completely glosses over that. Sure, he was an incredibly talented musician, and he preached a lot of positive things in the love about peace and love and unity, but he wasn't a perfect man, okay? He was flawed. But this film is too afraid to explore any of those flaws. Besides one violent outburst with this dodgy employee who's been embezzling money from the Bob Marley tour, you know, which conveniently like justifies Bob's violent actions in that scene, the film nary shows uh, Bob Marley in a negative light. Sure, the film does have some lovely messages about love and peace and compassion and forgiveness, but the film has absolutely no grit, no texture. So it just feels like you're watching something that's incredibly bland and generic. But I guess it makes sense because Ziggy, Rita, and Orly Marley all served as producers on this film, which is very telling. It just shows that they wanted to make a safe, squeaky clean movie, which didn't sully Bob Marley's name, brand, or his legacy. So yeah, it plays things very safe, it's conventional, and the result is that it's kind of a boring movie. The direction is kind of basic too. I thought the scenes with the concerts and Bob Marley's iconic music would have some snap, crackle, and pop, you know, be the real selling point of the movie, you know, kind of like how Bohemian Rhapsody, while still being not a very good film, at least had the Live Aid sequence, which had some pep and vinegar, but with Bob Marley, One Love, I can't tell you a single standout moment when it comes to the music in this film. These songs are great, but the execution of them in this movie doesn't do them justice. So let's ask them three questions. Firstly, would I watch it again? Nope, sorry, not even for the excellent performances of Kingsley Benadir and Lashana Lynch. There's just not enough 
for me to want to come back and watch this again. This movie didn't do it for me. Sorry, no. Question two, do I recommend it for you guys? Oh, who do I recommend this for? I mean, if you're a fan of Bob Marley's music and want to know more about him, then yeah, go check it out. Go with low expectations. I mean, Kings of Benedict is great in it. But yeah, this is not a film I would push on anybody and say, yeah, you have to watch this movie because it is so bloody generic. And third question, what score to give out of 10? The saving grace of this film for me was the two performances of Kingsley Benedict and Lashana Lynch, but the film just plays things too safe to the point where it's so bland and run of the mill. I hate to say it, but this is one of those safe, dull biopics like Whitney Houston's I Wanna Dance With Somebody, which will come and go and be forgotten about so quickly because guess what? It's extremely forgettable. I left this film feeling completely unimpacted. Is that a word? Yeah, it just did not affect me in the least. So yeah, I'm gonna give Bob Marley One Love a score of three out of 10. But as always guys, it's just one bloke's opinion. Have you seen Bob Marley One Love? If you have, what'd you make of the film? Let me know your thoughts on it in the comment section down below. If you guys have enjoyed the video, do help me out by hitting the thumbs up button. If you want more movie TV and Oscars related content, don't forget to click subscribe. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. For more things related to movies, TV, the Oscars, and popcorn culture, I'm Luke Airfield, and I'll see you next time.